Danielle Smith, and I'm the leader of the Wild Rose Alliance. We're a party that's been, uh, we formed just over two years ago, and so we're in the process of our policy development. But I take the view that our caucus, our MLAs, need to ha understand the principal industries that drive the Alberta economy. So we've spent a lot of time developing energy policy, and I think you can't develop a coherent energy policy without looking at the electricity generation picture. So I think that the greening of the electricity grid offers us the best opportunity to reduce our overall level of emissions. I think it's, it's, it's fairly clear that until we develop some clean coal technology that's cost effective, and um, that works. Coal, coal does, does not appear to be as strong an option for growth going forward. I, I think that we'll, um, th there's been an immense amount of investment in coal resources in this province in developing them and using them for electricity generation. But I, I do question whether or not that uh, level of investment is going to continue. It is a, it's a resource now that uh, even though it's in great abundance, there seems to be a, a lot of light being shed on the, whether or not it's efficient and the level of um, emissions that come from the use of coal across the board, uh, carbon dioxide just being one, but mercury and SO2 and NOx as well. So I think that by, by the, just from, from that fact, we're probably going to see a decreased reliance on coal. We'll, I think we'll certainly see an increased reliance on natural gas with natural gas prices being as low as they are. And it looks like it's going to stay this way for some time, there is going to be a market response to having more and more people switch into natural gas use. And I think that's good from an emissions point of view. And then, of course, there are a huge number of smaller players on the renewable front. The, the, the wind power is probably the, the biggest opportunity for increasing in the total amount of generation. Um, but there are interesting developments happening with, uh, with biomass and geothermal and solar. So I think we're in for over the next 10, 15, 20 years and beyond a, a, a real change in the, in the mix of our overall energy picture for electricity generation. I think it's an exciting time in this market. It, it seems to, to be, when we look at the variety of options that are on the table at this conference, it, it does appear that there will be a role for the government to play in changing policy, both at the provincial level and at the municipal level. I'm of the view that the, the first place to start is through regulatory streamlining. What I gather is that the, the process to get wind generation, wind farms approved, is extraordinarily onerous and that uh, microgeneration options are equally onerous. So st having as a starting point, making it easier for people to opt for greener technologies and greener generation seems to be a, a good place to begin. The, I'm not as convinced on some of the direct subsidies that have been proposed. Um, I, I do worry that when you start subsidizing certain types of industries or certain types of generation, that you do create a little bit of chaos in the marketplace. So I'm not quite sure how you introduce a, a greater number of renewables without without uh, creating that kind of market disruption. But that being said, there, there clearly has been a preferred status for the existing fuel mix, um, coal being a prime example. We have an entire transmission system that has been set up largely to facilitate the production of coal and get it transmitted to market. Um, coal enjoys a preferential royalty that other non-renewable resources don't enjoy. And um, they are now, with the Carbon Capture and Storage Fund, getting a preferential subsidy that other types of, of, um, of generation are not able to get. So there, there is a need to level the playing field. If we aren't going to subsidize and pick winners and losers, then that should apply across the board. And it could well be that because we have this, um, this preferred status for certain types of fuel use, it's already entrenched in the market. It could be that we need to look at some transitional policies to encourage more, de more development of renewables. I'm just not sure from the options that were on the table today uh, what the, the best mix would possibly be. I, I tend to favor allowing people to keep people and companies to keep more of their own money to invest in the, the kinds of changes that we would like to see. So whether that's providing some kind of tax rebate to residential or farm consumers for putting up a wind turbine or a solar panel on their home, 
or putting in a natural gas home unit, or whether it's giving incentives to industrial operations to invest in those same kinds of facilities and, and writing it off against their taxes. I think I prefer those kinds of approaches rather than direct subsidies from the taxpayers. So um, the, the, we, we weren't able to explore, I think, very many of those options in the conference here today. And it could be that those haven't been tried as frequently as some of the other options, and it could be that they're not as effective as some of the other options. I still need to do a bit more research on that. But it's it's been interesting to see that there is a whole range of policy tools available to governments at the provincial and federal level. And we have to, I think we have to take that seriously and look at them. We're in the process of developing our policy still, and I've I've met with a number of different players on the generation side. I've met with uh, various players in transmission and also some of the retailers, and it, it seems to me that there isn't a clear consensus about what the path is going forward. I do like the option of natural gas as a transition fuel. I don't know what the fuel of the future is going to be. Um, 30, 40, 50 years from now. But it does seem to me that in Alberta, we do have to rely on our strength, and our, our strength is, is in the traditional fossil fuels. Natural gas, I think, provides a great opportunity for us to be able to have a triple win. Not only does it um, benefit our local producers by giving them a new market because we've increased demand locally, uh, it also uh, allows consumers to reduce their costs if natural gas prices are going to continue to be relatively low, then there's a potential for cost savings. And it also has an environmental impact of being able to reduce the overall amount of emissions, uh, not just uh, greenhouse gas emissions, but uh, NOx and SO2 and particulate mercury, that kind of thing. So I, I think having a natural gas strategy that involves switching into, the, into, those, into a cleaner fuel is probably a good interim measure. And you can do things like uh, when governments change their fleets over, they can switch to natural gas. I know that that's only one aspect on the transportation side, but you can have um, policies, I think, for cogen in some of the uh, institutional facilities that governments build and operate, hospitals, schools, um, various public buildings. And I think that, that would send a good signal. It would demonstrate, I think, that um, some leadership in having the, the provincial players move towards that end. You'd also potentially see more of the municipalities move towards greener fuels. And then ultimately you want to see the, the consumers change. You want to see consumer behavior switching to those fuels as well. But I think that, the, that it begins by the province showing leadership. As for wind, I'm not uh, entirely certain about what the what the solution is there. I mean, we talked about both today, a cogeneration as well as, as wind. And it seems to me that there is a greater opportunity on, um, on, on cogen with natural gas as the base fuel. With, with wind there, I, I think we certainly want to re remove regulatory barriers, but it, it sounds like there's a, an appetite for direct subsidies. And I think I've already indicated that our, our party is not one that, um, that believes that we should be entering into markets and picking winners and losers. I think you, you end up potentially um, biasing the market. And I, I'm, I, I need to, to have a few more conversations to be convinced that that's the way that we should go. But natural gas to me seems to be a, a very obvious fuel switching. Um, opportunity for us that, that allows us to, to have the triple win. Uh -huh.